This video will cover wiring batteries in series. I'm Nick, author of Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified with over 2000 reviews. I will talk about voltage, capacity and wiring them together. I will also share tips on how to decrease the cost of your off-grid solar power system. Let's talk about the basics first. Connecting batteries in series increases the voltage of the battery while the capacity or amp hours stay the same. If we combine two 12V 100Ah batteries, we get one 24V 100Ah battery. Did you see that the voltage doubled and the capacity remained the same? I recently got a question. Does the power of the battery stay the same in series and parallel wiring? Let's see. If we calculate the total power of this battery, we get 24 volts times 100 amp hours equals 2400 watt hours. If we connect the same two batteries in parallel, we still have the same available power. 12 volts times 200 amp hours equals 2400 watt hours. So a series or parallel connection does not change the total power. Here are my three rules you should follow when connecting batteries in series. Do not series connect different capacity batteries. Do not series connect different chemistries like lead acid and lithium. Always fully charge a battery before connecting them in series. There are some advantages of increasing the voltage of your battery bank. These are cheaper wires and a cheaper charge controller. Let me explain. If you have a 12 volt 1000 watt inverter on a 12 volt battery, it will draw 84 amps. But if you were to use a 24 volt 1000 watt inverter, the current now changes to 42 amps. Effectively halving the current, so you can use less thick wire, saving you money. The second benefit is that your charge controller will be cheaper. Let's say you have 500 watts of solar power and want to charge a 12 volt battery. The charging voltage of a 12 volt lithium battery is 14.4 volts. We use the following formula. 500 watts of solar divided by 14.4 volts equals 35 amps. A 40 amp EP ever tracer will cost you $180. Now, if we increase the battery voltage to 24 volts, we get 500 watts divided by 28.8 volts equals 17 amps. A 20 amp EP ever tracer will cost you $120. $60 cheaper than if we were to use a 12 volt battery. This charge controller is a great choice because it has a maximum input voltage of 150 volts, while most charge controllers in this price range have a maximum of 100 volts. If we increase the battery voltage to 48 volts, the current will be even less. Make sure the charge controller is made for 48 volt batteries. If you want to learn how to size a charge controller, check my video about it. The same holds true for battery chargers. Less current equals reduced cost. A third but smaller benefit is that the voltage drop will be reduced. If we increase the voltage, there will be less of a voltage drop, leading to less power loss in the wire. This video is brought to you by my book. Thanks to the people who already bought it. Your support keeps the channel going. If you are interested in learning about off-grid solar power, then consider getting yourself a copy. Back to the video. Of course, connecting batteries in series has disadvantages too. I recently got an email from a viewer saying that a lead acid battery bank was not working as expected. I asked to measure the voltage of each 12 volt battery. It turned out that their batteries were not balanced properly. He then added a balancer to it and after a week the battery was working well again. Let me explain how this happens. Battery 1 might show 13.3 volts, whereas battery 2 could be at 13 volts. The accompanying diagram illustrates this discrepancy. Consequently, the system, be it an inverter or charge controller, perceives the combined unit as a single 24 volt battery at an average state of charge of 65% calculated from the total of 26.3 volts. 
Imbalance in batteries connected in series can come from variations in internal resistance or poor connections due to lugs or bus bars. Integrating a balancer with lithium and lead acid batteries in series ensures similar voltage across all batteries. Balancers or equalizers are connected to every battery. They ensure that every battery has the same voltage by discharging one battery into another, essentially acting like an active BMS. There is a way to solve this during the design stage. Instead of using two 12 volt batteries, use one 24 volt battery. A 24 volt lithium battery will have eight cells in series. The cells get balanced by the battery's internal BMS, so you don't have to add a balancer. If you use a 48 volt system, then get a server rack battery. These are 48 volts and usually 100 amp hours. This is only applicable for lithium batteries, because lead acid doesn't have 24 or 48 volt battery packs. Another disadvantage is that you need to use a voltage converter if you want to use 12 volt appliances. You cannot tap into the battery bank to get 12 volts, because it will cause imbalances, and we are trying to avoid these. If you have a 24 or 48 volt battery, you need to use a 24 to 12 volt or 48 to 12 volt converter to power your 12 volt appliances. Enough theory for now, let's explore some wiring diagrams. Here are some wiring diagrams for having batteries in series. We already saw the first one, two batteries in series. This is called a 2S configuration. We get a total of 24 volts at 100 amp hours. The second one is four batteries in series to make 48 volts at 100 amp hours. This is called a 4S configuration. We can also use a hybrid connection where we have two batteries in series and then in parallel. This is called a 2S 2P configuration or series parallel. We will get a battery of 24 volts at 200 amp hours. This diagram is for a 2S 3P setup. Two batteries are connected in series and then wired in three parallel sets. This creates a 24 volt 300 amp hour battery. If you want to make a 48 volt battery out of eight 12 volt batteries, then this is the wiring diagram you need. This is called 4S2P and creates 48 volts at 200 amp hours. For more information on wiring batteries in parallel, I recommend watching my video about it. You can wire as many batteries in series as long as they are balanced. Lithium batteries have a BMS inside. Some 12 volt batteries cannot handle 48 volts, because the BMS components are made for a maximum of 24 volts. Connecting these in series for a 48 volt battery will damage the BMS inside and make the battery useless. However, this is seldom the case anymore. You had this case when lithium became available to the public. If you want to have a 24 or 48 volt lithium battery, then I recommend buying a 24 or 48 volt battery. The BMS of the battery will balance the individual cells, so you don't need a balancer. Instead of buying four 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries, get one 48 volt 100 amp hour server rack. With the 12 volt batteries, they will create an imbalance over time, but the server rack will have an internal balancer from the BMS. When they charge a 24 or 48 volt battery, you need a charger matching the battery voltage. Do not use a 12 volt charger to charge the first 12 volt battery and then charge the second 12 volt battery. This leads to imbalances in between the batteries. If you do, disconnect the loads and charge the batteries until full. I do not recommend this, but can be useful in an emergency. If you learned something new from the video, consider subscribing and pressing the like button. It helps the channel grow. Check out my book on Amazon and watch these videos next.